Everybody, we are back. This is another part of chapter four. Uh, remember, chapter four is a lot about our classification and biodiversity. Now we're kind of focusing on like the classification of organisms. Now, this is where my favorite part of chapter four begins because we're going to talk about other organisms, not just our phytoplankton and zooplankton. So let's first start with acinoderms. So acinoderms, you should know the phylum, acinoderm. Acinoderms are going to be like our starfish. They're also gonna be sea cucumbers. And features that you need to know about acinoderms is they are pentaradial and they have tube feet. So our example is a starfish and the acinoderms, they're pentaradial, meaning they have five arms and their tube feet will actually suction water into their circulatory system. So why do we need acinoderms in the ocean? right? They're going to filter seawater. They're also going to balance a predator-prey relationship so they can actually consume some prey. Their mouths are actually on the underside of them. You can't really see it in our cartoon sea star, but they do balance that predator-prey relationship and they do increase biodiversity at coral reefs. Now, economically, that means money. What do we do with the money, right, from the senators? Well, we could have sea urchins, sea cucumbers. Those are actually used for sources of food. So we could catch them for food. We could use them for pharmaceutical drugs. They're gonna be used for some aquarium trades. So you may go to aquariums or you may know of somebody who has a saltwater tank and they have sea stars in it. Um, now, it could also help with ecotourism. So economically, people are more likely to go to areas that have an abundance of organisms. So they, since sea stars, they are balancing that predator-prey relationship, they're increasing coral biodiversity, that means people are going to pay more money to go and check them out. The only thing is sea urchins, when they are left unchecked, they can devour kelp forests and they can destroy them. So if we don't keep some of these sea stars and of course sea urchins, so our synoderms, uh, their population under control, they can get a little crazy and they can start to over consume around coral reefs and kelp forests. Crustaceans, the crusty crab. So crustaceans, an example could be krill. It could also be our crabs. Lobster is a big one, right? So all crustaceans have two pairs of antenna. Yes, you should know that. You should also know they have a carapace, which is behind their eyes. And then segmented abdomen. The segmented abdomen is segmented like somebody who has chiseled abs, right? So you can actually see the lines through it like a crustacean has chiseled abs. And then it has jointed walking legs. So these jointed legs are actually longer than the legs that you see in the back. Those are actually um, swimmerettes. They help the crustacean swim, but the jointed legs actually help it to walk. So you should know the features of an adult crustacean. Now, why are crustaceans important? Well, they're going to break down detrius. So basically like things that are decaying and dying and sinking to the bottom, they're actually going to recycle that mineral nutrients back into the environment. Hello, chapter three. We talked about that in chapter three. Remember your nutrients, carbon, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen. Also, crustaceans are going to eat algae off seagrass blades, which is important for the seagrass because the algae is going to cover it, taking that sunlight energy away from the seagrass, and therefore the seagrass cannot do photosynthesis if it's covered in algae. So crustaceans will actually clean off that algae, and then of course the seagrass will be able to do photosynthesis, allowing for the increase in biomass. Remember, more producers, more biomass because of course they're going to kind of control how many organisms can be in the environment. Economically, we're talking about money, everybody. Larger crustaceans, of course, we're gonna sell them for food, right? Humans love lobsters, so why not sell them for food? Small crustaceans like our copepods and our krill, they're actually going to increase and they're gonna be the largest amount of biomass that actually 
increases all of the food webs around the world. For example, krill biomass, there's 110 billion kilograms in the Southern Ocean. That's what a lot of our organisms that live in the water rely on. They rely on the krill. So if we did not have as many krill, then we would start to see the decline in our food webs. Crustaceans and copepods, they can actually be harmful to aquaculture. We haven't talked about aquaculture yet. That's actually going to be a level. So that's our next level. But aquaculture is just allowing for the increase in um, certain organisms. So like aquaculture, if we were trying to expand the population of lobsters, expand the population of certain fish. Alrighty, folks. So that was all about acinoderms and crustaceans. We're getting there. We're working through all of these different organisms that we need to know for our AS level exam. Remember, check out your learning goals. Go through the learning goals. Make sure you can answer those questions that are on the learning goals in the Cambridge syllabus. Super helpful. And then as always, if you like these videos, go ahead and like and subscribe so that you can continue to stay up to date with marine science.